Now, we've got a story and a half to tell you mm. and bring you now. Our very own GB News political correspondent, who we love very much, Catherine Foster, joins us in the studio and she's smiling, but she wasn't smiling for the past few days. Yes, she was expected to be bringing us the election results, as she always is, regularly on our programme on this big day, but found herself instead in a mother's worst nightmare after two of her sons, Matthew and Andrew, were reported missing in Bali. Well, Catherine endured, as she puts it, the worst day of her life before finally, after 40 hours of no sightings, hallelujah, the boys were found. And they were found and mummy's brought them into the studio this morning. Stupid. What the hell? <laughs> what, what, whose idea was it to go up a mountain, up a volcano? Whose idea was that? Unfortunately, it was my idea. <laughs> and when did you realise this is not such a good idea? Oh, quite, quite early on, I think it was like maybe two hours in, we were like, should we turn back now? Yeah. And we decided to go up and that was our last mistake because then we went up the rest of the mountain, phones died and got lost up there. So this is a, a volcano in Bali and instead of speaking to locals and taking the advice, which would have been hire a guide, make sure you've got expert advice getting up this mountain. You decided to use technology, which lots of people do do, and use an app on your phone to help you navigate it. But what went wrong, Andrew? Um, <laughs> I think it was just a complete lack of preparation, you know. Uh, just went out there, no power banks, like... Um, we were just completely unprepared and we hadn't done the research. So your phone ran out of battery and you just didn't know the way down. Literally yeah, that simple. Once we were at the top, we were expecting to see like tour groups and sure, stuff that sure. we could. But nobody, follow, but nobody yeah, about. No one. Yeah. yeah. Why was that? Do, we, do you know? <laughs> but, the top of the yeah. volcano it was so it was three thousand meters up, so it was in the clouds. Yeah. And the terrain was so sheer there was no way for us to go around the top to where the tour groups would have been. Gotcha, So gotcha. when we got there, we were just like, well, the risk of going, right. trying to go around is much too high. Well, meanwhile, Catherine uh, was, was working away. It was voting day on Thursday, and um, we're not allowed to cover any politics on, on Thursday, so it was a bit of a, a lull day for you. And that's when you started to get the bad news. I woke up at 6 o'clock and... Um, They'd arranged a proxy vote from Bali, and I thought, oh, I better check how they want me to vote. So I tried to ring them at six o'clock. He didn't pick up. Tried to ring Andrew. He didn't pick up. Thought, oh, they'll get back within a few minutes. They were amazing at keeping in touch. And they didn't. And after about 15 minutes, I thought, I'll go see where they are. I tracked on Find My Phone, and Matthew's last location was two days ago at the top of a volcano. And I was a bit worried then, but I thought, oh, it's a glitch, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a text from a friend saying, can you give us a call, a bit worried about them. Then spoke to a girl they'd befriended uh, who was in Sweden, but they'd met on their travels. And she told me that they'd gone up the mountain. Uh, by the time I found out, they'd been missing for 30 hours. They'd gone up the mountain on the Tuesday night, British time. This was the Thursday morning, without a guide. And they'd told her it was really hard. And she told them to turn back, but they hadn't. And... They'd sent screenshots from this app with this trail that they were following on the app. Screenshots of the app in case there was a problem and a, a Snapchat of a Matthew avatar at the top. And she said, I know they made it to the top because I could see that his phone had nearly died. But the, the trail had actually closed many years ago. So the app, we will need to make sure that that gets taken off the app. But, you know, technology saved them in the end because... It was the screenshots and it was the messages that they'd sent, but they should never have been without a guide. And, and Catherine, for context, y you've got three children. Yeah. You sadly lost your husband yeah. just a few years ago, 2021, and they were fearing for the lives of your, of, of your boys. What was running through your mind? Yeah, I have a 15-year-old and my 90-year-old dad was down staying. He'd been looking after the 15-year-old while I'd been on the election. Um, campaign, but my husband had died of a heart attack very suddenly, shortly after I started working here in 2021. So I've literally got the three of them. And before they'd gone away, I'd said to them, uh, you know, please be careful. I can't take any more trauma. And on the Monday, I'd spoken to them and I couldn't talk to them for long because 
I was uh, with the Prime Minister on, it was a gin tasting, the then Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, on a, a visit to a gin distillery. I was about to go and taste gin. And I was like, I can't talk to you for long. And they, they mentioned a hike in passing, but I didn't know the details. And I said to them, look, don't go off on your own. You know, people get lost. Jay Slater, Michael Mosley, go in a group. And, and mm. Matthew's exact words to me were, well, Mum, we're not stupid. And that was almost the last thing. Well, thank that goodness oh, you weren't stupid. But what were you doing during those 30 hours that Mum couldn't, when the phone died and Mum couldn't get in touch? Where were you? What were you up to? Well, we were trying to figure out the safe, the best course of action because going, trying to find the path without our phones, it was straight through the middle of the jungle. And when you're in the jungle, everything... Looks the same, same, yeah. But it started to pour with rain and we were on these rocks and we sat under a tree and the amount of rain created a river, like a stream. Yeah. We were like, oh, oh we grew up with our dad watching like Bear Grylls videos. We were yeah. like, let's follow the stream downhill and then the sunset and we just had to like sleep in the bushes in the jungle. And what were you, what were you boys thinking at that point? You probably were worried that your mum would be worried. Yeah. Were you worried for yourselves? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say the first night, yeah, very worried. But um, once we'd gotten down to the bit where we made a, a little base, we were more so, I'd say, worried about everyone at home not knowing that we're, you know, somewhere relatively safe and calling for help and, yeah. But you'd no food, you'd no water. You'd... Yeah. I mean, so, so and, and you had to sleep outdoors that, that first night. You yeah. just downed tools and um, you, you set it out until the sun comes up again. Yeah. But you, you had an idea that you could be down that hill in a certain amount of hours or so? Yeah, we thought when we started following the river down, we mm. thought that, right, well, it will eventually lead to civilization. But the next morning when we woke up, we followed it down and it led to a, uh, a big waterfall that dried oh. with about a 10 metre drop. So we weren't actually able to follow it any oh, further boy. down. Gosh. And did you have those moments as brothers where you sort of embraced each other and, and were grateful that you had each other? And what did you say to each other? Well, on the, on the way up, I, I snapped at Andrew because he was just listing off everything that could go wrong. And as the elder brother, as the one that ultimately was in charge, I was like, I don't need to hear this right now. We mm -hmm. need to get down. But then mm -hmm. yeah. at the end, I, was, I remember, I was like... Out of it, obviously the last person I'd want to be lost with is my brother, because <laughs> but it's also he is the person that I knew would be best in the situation. Yeah, me. yeah. So <sighs> when when did it all come to an end? How did it all come to an end? What did you see? Uh, we we'd just been shouting all day, help, 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 help us, and uh, you'd made we, an SOS as well. Yeah, oh. made an SOS, and we hear from the forest um, these like noises, and we're we're shouting help, help, and then they make themselves known and we go further down and we see their flashlights. It's, this was the search party. Yeah. yeah. And they Gosh. were expecting to find you dead. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And yeah. what state were you in? We were, we were tired, but we weren't, like, we'd had, what we'd collected rainwater, so we'd had stuff to drink. We hadn't eaten, so we were extremely exhausted. But when they found us, they were like... You boys are very, very, and they were looking for a word. And I was like, stupid. And they were like, yes, extremely yes. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Catherine, yeah. and have, have you got over the, the, the sorrow and turned it into anger? I mean, how do you feel today about it all? I, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I'm ecstatic, but I'm just, uh, yeah, I was, I was beyond furious, beyond furious. <laughs> I was making all sorts of threats if they <laughs> weren't dead that I was going to, to kill them. You're going to kill them yourself. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they were so lucky, and the, the reason we've done this, I we did think about it uh, because obviously they were very silly and they're going to get abused for that, but the reason we've done it is because we want other people to learn from this. You know, they were so lucky, um, and I just want hopefully other families with kids travelling to look at this and know that yeah. they made it out, but they very nearly mm -hmm. didn't. And Matthew fell down a load of rocks and, you know, could have, like, a, a lot of rocks and... Um, if one of them had got injured or whatever, so it's. A, but also, we just want to say thank you to the people that rescued them. Thank you to this girl Sarah that had raised the alarm. She'd reported them missing the night before I even knew, and all our friends who, the day that I found out, they dropped their jobs. They came round to my house. They basically we galvanised an army and all of their young friends 
got missing uh, notifications going out on social groups that right through Bali and you know so we, everybody saved them and we just want to say thank you but also please learn mm. from just, this. just just on a final note um, Bear Grylls has commented on this hasn't he he's heard about what happened what's he said oh, I thought... I can't remember exactly. I think he put saying like "well done, boys," and he like left the strong arm emoji <laughs> on his tweet. But that was, yeah, it was quite surreal to see that. Yeah. Sitting, well, growing up watching him. Thank goodness for Bear and his videos, and you knowing what you knew. And uh, good seeing you, lads. Very yeah. good yeah. seeing you. I want to give you a hug, and Catherine. Yeah. Come we here. We want you. We want you to know how much we we love your mum and how vital she is to the work that uh, <gasps> don't we, do it we again do here. <laughs> Yeah. We will never do anything like yeah. this. <laughs> I believe you. Oh, yeah, I can believe that. Can believe it's that. She loves you so, yeah. so much. Uh, we love her so much. Oh, Matthew oh, and Andrew, Catherine. thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you very, very much. much indeed. Thank you, Catherine. Fine boys. Lovely Despite boys. Despite what you think, wanting to kill them. They're, they're, they're very nice. You've done a very good job. <laughs> good. There we go.